I am extremely excited right now because today is the day that I finally get to unveil to you guys the engine that is going to be powering our new Mustang build. Now, without question, this is one of the largest engines that I have ever got to work on. In fact, it's so big, it's even bigger than the 535 cubic inch big block Chevy that's going to be powering the ugly truck. Now, because of its sheer size, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to actually fit this new engine under the hood of the Mustang, where currently we only have a 4.6 liter single overhead cam V8. It's a challenge, but I am up for it, and I can't wait to get the process started. But before I show you the new engine, I've got a little explaining to do, because even though it wasn't on purpose, I lied to you. Now, one of the reasons why I even bought this Mustang in the first place is because whenever I get the 535 done, I'm basically going to have a 100% complete running and driving 8.1 that's going to be ready to swap into something. And the reason why I love the Mustang, well, number one, the looks. I know this isn't everybody's favorite, but this is my absolute favorite body style of Mustang. And number two, the suspension on these is pretty darn good, so it just takes a few simple changes and we can harness all the power and torque that that big block is making. Now, the only thing is, we're not quite done with the 8.1 just yet. And I promise, I had every intention of 8.1 swapping this car, but we're still chasing a 10 second pass and I am convinced with a few more simple tweaks to this thing, we can get this 100% stock unopened junkyard long block to push this 5,000 pound Silverado into a 10 second pass. And the only other thing about it, well, this engine is incredibly heavy. I think when it's fully dressed, that 8.1 weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 750 pounds. And that's not counting the turbo stuff that's attached to it. Now, I don't really have a problem with swapping a Chevy engine into a Ford, or even a Ford engine for that matter, into something else, like a Toyota Mini truck. But the more and more I thought about putting the 8.1 under the hood of the Mustang, well, the less excited I got. Now, on paper, it checks all of the boxes that I normally go for. It's an oddball engine. It makes lots of power, and it would be a bit of a challenge to stick it in there. But for whatever reason, it just didn't get me excited. And on top of that, there's the weight of the engine. That thing is like ridiculous. So I kind of was browsing around one night, just pondering what I could possibly do with this Mustang. And then it occurred to me, there was one other engine that checks all those same boxes. And it's also been on my engine bucket list for a very long time. In fact, ever since I had my last batch of Mustangs, I have wanted one of these engines, but I've never got the chance to work on one until now. So there are a lot of different engine options that we could have gone with for this swap. And I know a lot of you guys were hoping for like the big block, a small block Ford, a Coyote, or even an LS. But I went with something that's a little bit less common and it's something I've always wanted to do. So let me introduce you to the 5.4 liter 32 valve dual overhead cam Ford modular V8. Now I say Ford, although technically this one was installed in a Lincoln Navigator SUV, but Unfortunately for us over here in the United States, that's really the only common application that these were made in. I mean, sure, you could have went out and bought a 2000 Mustang Cobra R and pulled the motor out of that, but there's nobody selling any of those right now. And they only made 300 of them, so they are absurdly rare. And yeah, technically the GT supercar falls in that same category, but when I looked around at the junkyards, there were no Ford GT supercar motors available for sale, especially none that like cost less than my house. So anyway, Lincoln Navigator Motor it is. Now, like I said, I'm really excited about this one. I've wanted to do this swap for a long time, and we'll talk about some of the reasons later on. But first, just for some rough numbers, this engine is rated at 300 horsepower, uh, 350 pounds of torque, according to the internet, which is a little more than the 260 horsepower and 300 pounds of torque that this one is rated at. Once again, according to the internet, if you want to believe that. We will be dynoing these throughout the build process just to kind of get some good, solid numbers. Um, oh, power-wise is what I was going to say. This one is going to be getting a few changes internally to bump those numbers up a little bit further. And one of those cool changes we're going to kind of get started on right now. We need to do some teardown work because this really weird looking alien spaceship long runner truck intake is going to get replaced with something a little bit more exotic from the land down under. Sorry about that. If you're from Australia. <laughs>
Not a single one broke on this side. That one came all the way out. And that one came all the way out. I did actually break this one off the other day when I was trying to put my engine sling on here, so there's one. But so far, the rest of them, it's so good. Last one, guys. Wish me luck. Ha ha! Got it. Didn't even have to break out the welder. So probably the number one question that you might have is why the heck did I choose an oddball 5.4 overhead cam navigator motor instead of something like a Coyote or a Godzilla or you know an LS swap or all these other great engines that are out there? Well, the answer is simple, because I want to. I have always wanted to do one of these engines. It's been a bucket list item for me. And just like the 8.1, this 5.4 may not make a lot of sense to most people at first. Like, it might not be the most powerful engine. It might not be the easiest to modify. It might not be the simplest to find parts for. And other engines can probably make more power for cheaper. But I've always wanted to do it. I like doing stuff different, and that's good enough for me. So I hope you guys enjoy this build. But right now, we have two different choices that we could take, or two different paths, I guess you could say. Uh, option number one, I could install all the parts that I have on the way, and we could get this thing dumped into the Mustang right away with basically a stock motor. Um, we have some 0304 Cobra exhaust manifolds coming, and that's simply because the pattern and spacing of the port, or not spacing, but the shape of the ports is different from the four valve head to the two valve. And I thought about long tubes, don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to spend the time, effort, and money on long tubes when this is going to be turbocharged and the long tubes won't work in the long run. So exhaust manifolds are cheaper, easier to install, and easier to fit. Uh, item number two is actually already here. We have a same thing, 0304 Cobra 8-bolt flywheel. Um, and this is because the Navigator motor uses an 8-bolt forged crankshaft instead of a 6-bolt flywheel like the Mustang currently has. So we needed a new flywheel. And finally, the one piece that I am most excited to get, it's on the way, we have an Australian Boss 290 intake manifold. Now, I remember reading on the Mustang forums back in the day about this fella named Birdman, and he modified these Australian intakes, and he put them on these Mustangs, and I just thought it was the coolest looking setup I'd ever seen. So, all these years later, we finally have one on the way. Um, now, if I took option number one, you know, stock motor with a few bolt-on parts, put it in the car, from what the forums say, if you believe them, this could make about 300 to 320 horsepower at the wheels. I think that was the official number. But option number two, the other thing we could choose is right now, instead of putting in the car, we could completely tear this thing apart, put a different piston and rod in there, possibly change a few things in the cylinder head, like maybe a different camshaft. Like we put the 98 Cobra intake cams in here. We could do some aftermarket camshafts all around, change the valve springs, maybe go through the heads to make sure the guides are good and the valve seats are sealing like they should. Um, you know, possibly bump the compression a little bit you know, one of the reasons why the Coyote makes such good power for such a small engine is it has like an 11 to 1 compression ratio in the Mustang, where right now this, I believe, is like 9.5 to 1, which, granted, 9.5 is pretty good for boost, but anyway, um, that's option number two. I am not entirely sure just yet which route I'm going to take. I'm kind of leaning towards option two, but I got some decisions to make because this is supposed to be a little bit of a budget build. We got that other engine over there and the whole other truck project that's going to kind of snowball and probably kill me, but um, this project here is kind of on the budget side of things, but I still do want to make somewhere between like 800 and 900 horsepower when it's all said and done. That's a totally doable power number, like it's been done a million times before, and I think it'll be awesome, but I'm kind of trying to stick to a budget. So 
We'll see how this one goes. You know what happens as soon as you open an engine up, you let all the stock magic out and then your wallet just kind of <laughs> flows right in there. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more about another engine build we're doing, check out another video, please. That really helps out the channel grow. Thank you. Come back soon for more truck and Mustang content.